<laughs> All right, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Knights of Horror. Today is a very special video. We actually, even though we're still quarantined, we got the entire crew together. First time ever. We got me, of course, your host. We got Logan, the newest member of the Knights of Horror. And we got Sammy, the veteran over here. The Get legend. It. The legend. The legend killer? Just kidding. Just okay, there you go. Uh, today we got a new series uh, that we're calling Maze Treatments. Now, this was heavily inspired by uh, TLV Media or TLV Horror. To love. To live. To love. Mm -hmm. um, they gave us um, a video that had a list of rules for each maze, and I very much liked that idea. However, the way they did their video was based on the, the, um, the speculations that was for HHN of 2020. The way we're doing it is mazes we would just love to see out of properties we would love to see as well. So we're we're basing it around anything, and that's the premise of the show. And it won't only be Halloween Horror Nights. It will be Not Scary Farm, Queen Mary, Haunted Hayride, Six Flags, whatever it may be, whatever we have an idea for a treatment for. We plan on bringing uh, guests on and kind of being like a Shark Tank type show where we're the three judges. We hear them out, and we ultimately decide what is the winner for that round or that episode. So... For this being the pilot episode, it's going to be us three today. We each have two maze treatments that we actually wrote out, and TLEV um, was the big, like I said, was the big inspiration for this. So uh, let me go down the rules as to what each maze treatment has to have. You have to have a facade, obviously, for the intro to your maze. Uh, the first room to kind of get everyone into that world as to what you're bringing to life. Uh, transition rooms to uh, transition to your different scenes. Um, a money shot room, which is basically like the room that everyone's going to be talking about for years to come. Uh, you're going to have to have a final room, which will, of, of course, be um, second to your money shot room where, you know, that's going to be the final room to wrap up the entire maze and kind of have that big, like, wow at the end. Um, a last scare, which, of course, if you guys have been to these events, um, these mazes usually have, like, that one last scare that gets you before you get out. What your scares or scare actors will be as far as who will be in the maze, uh, whether it be uh, wh whatever you're doing, what kind of characters will be in these maze, and what kind of scares will they be doing. Um, and, of course, this one really mostly applies to Horror Nights if you do do a Horror Nights one. And at least for mine, these are kind of would be meant for Horror Nights. But if there is a Twitter password, uh, what would, you know, who would be that handler to be the person to give the Twitter password to? Uh, and what would you know? What you know? What would they give out or whatever? Um, so this is our first time doing this. So bear with us. Um, we each, like I said, picked two. So Sammy, why don't you kick us off with your first maze treatment? Round one, fight. Yeah, I'm gonna go with uh, a great classic movie. Very scary. Uh, not it's not still not classic. It's just classic to me because it's one of the <laughs> one of the first horror films I've ever watched. And actually got freaked out by uh, the strangers. Nice. Uh, I think that would be, it would lend, that would lend itself very well to uh, a horror nights ask maze. Um, I think um, because obviously it has a cabin. Um, we're gonna do it based on the first movie, not Prey at Night, just the yeah. first one. Uh, um, uh, so I think the beginning will be the facade would be kind of the uh, kind of like. Uh, you like have like a little car on the right, um, uh, like a little drive driveway, and you kind of walk up the pavement inside to the the home. Definitely. Uh, um, and I think in that first room, um, there's really not going to be too much scare, but kind of just to get you acquainted with with the uh, with what it looks like. Um, obviously, there's not a lot of scares towards the beginning of that movie, uh, and not until they actually show up. So I think like the first thing, um. Would kind of be like you kind of walk down a hallway. Um, so after you go through like the main like living room, so you get a, like a presence of what that looks like. So when it comes back up later, you know where you're at. Yeah. Um, you go down the hallway, and like one of the uh, main characters, not like the not the killers, but like the the protagonists, uh, will be like come out of like a door or something, kind of like one of those innocent scares, not like meant to scare you, but kind of just like. They accidentally just open a door or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so then uh, we'll go on to our next scene where you'll kind of um, – where it'll kind of be like a window shot. Um, 
and you'll see like someone like walking down the street like with like a faint light or something like that, like one of the street lights. Yeah. Um, which will then will take you up into another back up into the living room again. Um, you'll have like the knock on the door, and you'll have someone answer the door, um, and they'll be looking for that one person that they were looking for. Um, and then I think that's what all the fun and chaos actually really starts happening. Um, like where you're kind of stuck in the room, um, and there's like the where they have the shotgun and they accidentally kill the person that was coming to save them, um, and things like that. Um, as we get towards like the money shot. I think uh, the money shot is you're going to be in the room with all of the the killers um, where they hit you with that because you were home, uh, where they're all tied down. And, like, obviously the, the killers can come after you, too, even though they're going to supposed to be interacting with the people in the chairs. Definitely. Um, um, I think from there, uh, <clears throat> you'll be leaving, um, and you'll see... I think kind of like moving towards that final scare, like at the end of the film, um, as opposed to them being like with the car, um, you'll kind of be walking and you'll see like someone that resembles the characters, like the, the scary characters that you would have seen, um, but like looking normal and kind of yeah, give yeah. you that eerie feeling as you leave. Awesome. Yeah. And um, any Twitter passwords or handlers for this one or not really none no nah, no nah, i don't think i don't think this one lends itself just, to that. just gonna, gonna kind of throw that one out there that'd be a non-twitter password maze yeah it's a non-twitter one all right logan thoughts on this one you know what uh strangers i i think is one of the more modern horror movies that i really like i'm, I'm really picky with modern horror flicks like there there's a handful of really good ones and there's a buttload of really bad ones and Strangers is one that I've thought of for a while that would be a great maze idea. And I was surprised that there wasn't one for, I forgot what the second one was called that came out a few years back. Uh, Pray at Night. Night. Yeah, yeah, I'm surprised that, that that didn't get a maze. I would prefer one of, of the first film, but I was just surprised to not see even one for the second film when that came out, just to even like promote it. I, I'm not sure what company or what film studio uh, is strangers held under who, who is that do you know i i know the second one was like a bunch of like indie kind of film oh. companies in a way but it was still like held i think by like a big one i want to say maybe have to Li- maybe Lionsgate. i don't know yeah, i'm thinking maybe Lionsgate too i'm not sure but anyways nonetheless i think that would be a great idea um especially it, it's a it's a very it's a fan favorite modern horror movie and it would i think it would bring uh quite a bit of uh people into the park um, I know a lot of people who are fans of that movie. I haven't seen it in years, uh, and then you just talking about it like totally nailed it on the, totally nailed it on the head with like, oh yeah, I forgot about that scene and that scene how they kill it, how they kill the guy with the shotgun, uh, who was coming to save them. Like I totally forgot about all that. I think that would be a great idea. I don't know about you, Anthony, but what, what do you think about it? So I have never uh, seen the first Strangers. However, I have seen Strangers Pray at Night, so I have an idea of what these characters are like. I've seen a lot of clips from the first Stranger movie as far as, you know, what it looks like and stuff. So I think it'd be, it'd be a very eerie maze, honestly. You, it, I think that level of uncomfortability, uncomfortable, being uncomfortable would just be uh, there. I mean, you see these these killers in, in this in this movie and it's just like you, you kind of imagine yourself in that situation. And, and Sammy brings this one up time and time again. Like, I think the scariest thing about that movie is like, why are you doing this? Because you were home. Like, this can actually happen to someone. You know what I mean? So the the fact that, you know, I think the first one was actually based on a true story, and you know, I mean, just the fact that you know stuff like this actually happens. Like, and then to bring that alive into a maze, you know, you're you're kind of living that. So I think that's it's a pretty good idea, and I would love to see Strangers. I I, I remember like I was with you, Logan, when Strangers Two came out. I was like, this could be a good you know maze idea. Um, especially because they went a little bit like further than they did with the first one, as far as the killing and and you know going after the the people. So, yeah, I, I think it'd be a really good idea, and I, I would look forward to uh, seeing that. So, good job, Sammy. Strangers coming to HHN. Hopefully, uh, one one year would be good. Cannot wait. Logan, hit us with your first one, man. All right. Well, uh, I'm gonna be pretty cliche. Uh, I think a lot of people could probably guess what I'm about to say. Uh, having watched the last video, I'm a big Halloween fan. Uh, and this is much more realistic. I, I think I think this could really happen, and I'm really curious to see if or I should say when they do this maze to see how much of my predictions or my ideas will match with what they do. 
Uh, that being said, Halloween 2018. Uh, I think that would be a very strong maze. Um, I know they've done countless Halloween mazes in the past, and they've taken a break from it, but I think 28, uh, 2018 film being a Blumhouse movie was, I, I'm sure it's just going to come to the matter. But anyways, I'll get right to it. Uh, the facade, someone's got a cat. Someone's That's got a cat. <laughs> <laughs> That's my sister's cat, and she's annoying. Well, the maze isn't going to feature cat, unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, look, Cats the Musical would be a very that terrifying maze. That was the scariest maze of the night, man. I, I don't want to see that. But the, the, the trailer looked terrifying. Uh, anyways, um, yeah, I'm not going to have Taylor Swift mazes. Or Taylor Swift cat mazes. Um, okay, so uh, the facade I'm thinking, it's going to be the sanitarium where the movie opens. Uh, what's it called? Smith's Grove uh, Sanitarium. Smith's Grove Sanitarium. Facade, uh, and... You know, I, I really like when you're walking up to like a facade and you can hear sounds or like somebody talking over it. It kind of puts you in the mood of, of the film. Like you could have like the mad doctor that's in that movie kind of talking about his patient, Michael Myers, as yeah. you're walking through there. Um, and then the first room I'm thinking, well, have, have the people walk down a hallway in the sanitarium and uh, have a hallway of like doors of like the patient rooms and have the patients like running at the doors. You know how those doors have like little windows to see through. They're screaming at you through the windows, kind of setting this really eerie kind of mood. And then uh, the 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 next room will be that big courtyard that you see in the movie with like the red and black, like I'm sorry, uh, red and white checkered floor where yeah. all the most dangerous patients are there, including Michael Myers. They're all chained there, and some are acting, you know, crazy. And Michael's just standing perfectly still. And when you walk by him. He like you know he, he that's when he kind of nudges kind of tries to get out of the get you, uh, and then um, and I believe he's not masked in that scene so that's mm-hmm. kind of showing him like the back so you don't see his face but you can he's like an he's like Dan Michael without the mask. Uh, transition into Haddonfield, uh, and uh, no I'm sorry uh, I, I jumped the gun a bit uh, before you get to Haddonfield uh, you're gonna go down that highway where the bus is crashed and the patients are kind of lurking around. And then that's where Michael and his mask, uh, I'm sorry, uh, unmasked, uh, he'll, he'll have his, you know, in the movie how he's got an eye that's like uh, from the original, uh, Lori poked his eye out. So he's kind of got that, like that big wound in his eye. Yeah. So if they could do a cool makeup effect with the, with the Michael jumping out at you with that, you know, scary looking emotion, emotionless uh, and wounded face popping out at you uh, on that dark highway. And then we'll get to Haddonfield. And then uh, we'll get to the bathroom scene, which I think is one of my favorite scenes in the movie. Uh, uh, I think uh, during this scene, we should have guests have the smells, like, you know, like from the old saw mazes, where, like, everything just smelled like shit. And yeah. Kinda, and that's one thing I missed about Horror Nights are the smells, because they were so gross, and they totally, like, put you in there, you know? Um, so bathroom smells, you know, like like some like Lysol cleaner smell and maybe some crap smell. Uh, and then Michael's, uh, you're not sure which bathroom stall he's hiding behind, but he's going to come out of one and you're going to get the crap out of you. Uh, nice. And then uh, we'll go to the to the kid's house who's being babysat uh, by the babysitter. And we'll, of course, have the very infamous scene from the trailer uh, where, he's, where he's in the closet. So we'll have him coming out of the closet. You know, I, I think not having that scene in there as uh, as much as it's, it's a cliche, but it, it's cool that it's a cliche. If not having it in there would be unjust. Uh, and then uh, we, there should definitely be a scene when you're walking down Haddonfield at night uh, down a neighborhood, and uh, there's a gate. Yeah, there's the gate where it has the kid with the devil costume hanging from the gate. If you remember yeah. that gnarly kill scene, have Mike standing standing behind him, putting him on the gate. Uh, you know, I think like Halloween Two Maze. Remember that one, twenty sixteen. There's the part with like with with the nurse, where he's like lifting, lifting the nurse. Yeah. Yeah, he could do something similar with the kid putting them on the gate. Yeah, and yeah. Popping out at you as you walk by, or you know, like. Um, and then um, what I'm thinking, I'm thinking uh, the ending of the maze is going to be in Laurie's house, of course, where the big climax of the film happens. Um, and uh, there's a part in there's a part in the movie. Where I immediately thought of Horror Night was the mannequin scene, uh, where there's a bunch yes. of skins around, and like I don't know, I think people are going to be talking about that one for a while, where he, there's just a bunch of mannequins and he's just going to pop out of you know a couple of mannequins. You don't know where he's going to come. Yeah. And, 
I, I'm feeling like the money shot per se is going to be at the very end. I'm kind of putting my money shots at the very end because I think putting the cool the, the the, the coolest thing in the maze at the very end is like what is the last thing that people remember. Um, and it's something that they're going to continue talking about is the house is going to be on fire and there's yeah. going like to, there's going to be like a kind of like a warm effect where it's, it, uh, I don't know what comes to mind is like, if you've been to the into Disneyland and fantasy land, uh, Mr. Toad's wild ride, yes. that, part, that part where you, where you go to hell, uh, and it, you kind of feel warm. And, uh, I don't know. I think, with a, with a heat effect and then Michael looking kind of burned, trying to get out of the house and trying to get you at the same time and just popping out of every corner for a final scare. Just, you know, like every corner he's popping out at you. You, you can't get away from it. Uh, I think, I don't know. I, I think that's what I got for that one. Uh, what do you guys think? I like it. I love Halloween 2018. And I've been wanting to see this one come to HHN for some time. Um, so I think that would work out perfectly. I mean, from when you go to, of course, starting at the sanitarium all the way to the bus crash scene and then making your way through his havoc through Haddonfield leading up to the final finale at Laurie Strode's house, I think is just a a great kind of way to sum up the entire movie within a five minute maze, uh, which is perfect, especially that, uh, money shot last scare room where you're going to have, of course, the house on fire and having that effect of it feeling hot. That would really put you into the, the, the movie and into that scene of, of it feeling hot. So, yeah, I'm, I'm all for it. I dig it. Hey, how about you, Sammy? No, I think, I think those are – you really took me through the movie and took me, <laughs> took me through a, a really quality maze there. It's something I would love to see. I think the only thing I would maybe add is maybe a scene where, like, it's Halloween night. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like where you see the the mask from Halloween Three, yeah, uh, um, kind of going through that. Uh, yeah. Maybe I think a scene like that where you get to see like people dressed up as other people, other characters, um, be- and then he's gonna come out of nowhere. Yeah. I think that would be really sick. That's a great idea. Something we've seen in the past with those too. Exactly. Yeah, that works. It seems like in the Halloween maze they always put a Halloween Three like little Easter, Easter egg. egg. Yeah, like I think in uh, 2015 they they had the TV. Showing the commercial, yeah. and the, yeah, yeah, and they I think they had the kids running around with the masks on too. But yeah, it seems like every um, it seems like every Halloween maze they do a Halloween three little tribute in there. Yeah, yeah. All right, Halloween twenty eighteen, man, I'm all for it. Let's do it. Um, all right, my first maze. Lately, I've been into this show called What We Do in the Shadows. Funny show, very funny show. Mockumentary, vampires, uh, based off a of Taika Waititi film that came out in 2014 but a short that came out in 2005 um and this version of the sh- of the show is uh to, it follows a group of uh, a whole new group of vampires so what i what i'm proposing is what we do in the shadows season one and so the essential idea of the maze it will be following the vampires uh on their late night uh, adventures and uh capture some of the f- uh, the iconic uh moments from the first season so the facade I was thinking, of course, if you've seen the show, uh, would be their house uh, from the show, of course, and um, give it that spooky feeling and obviously play the theme song of the show and the outside of the maze to kind of get everybody into the kind of move, uh, mood of this. This, this would be a, a horror comedy maze, so I would love to see the challenge that arises for this one, which I kind of took on when I was writing out the treatment in a way. So that first room, uh, you walk into the entrance of the house, we get introduced to Gilmore or Gil. Gilmore, I, I always fucking pronounce his name wrong, but um, he is basically the um, familiar to um, what's his name? Uh, what is his name? Uh, Nandor, which is the main vampire of there, and a familiar basically is, of course, um, a in a way slave to the vampires who they help them do day to day stuff that they can't get done if they have to go out and buy stuff to get during the day, or you know just take care of the house while they're asleep and stuff. Um, so you're going to get introduced to him and basically it's, it's going to be like the show where he's kind of talking to you, the audience as to what he does for the vampires. At that point, you'll have Nandor jump out from another side as he's talking to you to kind of get your attention one way. And then Nandor jumps out the other way. Um, then you'll walk down the long hallway that you see actually in the show, uh, from there and you'll get introduced of course, to the other two vampires, Laszlo and Nadia, Nadia, um, who will jump out both sides, two doors coming out. So they'll jump out of you at the same time. They'll probably deliver one of their quotes or something like that from the show. 
Um, transition rooms, I was thinking I can throw in some of the, the paintings that you see on the show that actually describe um, their lives throughout the century. So, like, as the, sh as the maze goes on, you can hear quotes from the show of them talking about their lives in the centuries, from centuries and centuries ago. And you can actually see a lot of the maze, uh, the paintings from the, each transition room that transli transitions to the next scene. My big money shot room, which was a big uh, kind of um, – a big kind of moment of season one, which would be uh, to see, of course, the big vampire council who was filled with a ton of like vampire celebrities who have played vampires in the past. Like you had Wesley Snipes there who played Blade, obviously. Um, there was a lot of people there. I mean, Pee Wee Herman was there and I guess he played a vampire at one point. Um, and uh, of course, you had the original cast from what we do in the shadows who are also part of the council, which I thought was really funny. So that would be the big money shot room, them standing on trial. And of course uh, they see you, the humans, and they would obviously try to attack you, which would be cool. I think my last scare room would be, of course, uh, Gilmore. You do find out in the show. Um, yeah. He's like, uh, he's got um, like origin blood from uh, Van Helsing. So he is a Van Helsing. So I think my final kill or my last scare room would be Gilmore killing off all the vampires and um, all the main vampires at the same time coming out to scare you. So as you're getting distracted by Gilmore killing vampires, you have, of course, the main cast that would come out and scare you. Um, as far as my characters and scare goes, I mean, of course, you see all three vampires and, and Gilmore. And then, of course, there's uh, in the first season, you do get to see some werewolves. So I would probably do a werewolf scene as well where, of course, the vampires and the werewolves are, are fe uh, fighting off. and you'll So you get to see some werewolves, as well as the other vampires that you see throughout the show. Um, and then this one, I would make a Twitter password handler name. Uh, there's a vampire on the show that I did not put in the maze purposely because I would like to him to be the outside person. Uh, his name is Colin. He's actually the boring kind of energy vampire, so he sucks the energy out of people, but he's like a very boring person. He'd be pretty much standing out boring you with facts about his job and and the other vampires and then uh basically uh i would have the the passwords for each night be different as mm -hmm. as something like to do with the show easter eggs references but i think i would make the first um password for the first night shadows uh so that's my first maze right there what we do in the shadows that's pretty that sounds pretty solid dude i actually haven't watched the uh the, the show, I, I've seen the film. The film's great. I just never got on watching the show. But now I really want to watch the show. Yeah. Having having heard what what you just described, I'm really intrigued now. I'm probably going to end up watching that tonight, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, it sounds super solid. And I, I know that there's a good fan base for that show and the, and the film that would love to see that come to HHN. And I'm all for pleasing people. You know, yeah. I, I'm, I'm all for giving people what they want at this at this event. Um, and there is a big want for it from what I've seen. I, I, I lately I haven't heard too many people talk about it, um, but I need to watch that damn show. Like I, I loved the movie; it was hilarious, it was witty, uh, it it was it was uh, I don't know. It was a perfect combo of uh, horror and comedy. And I being that H A Chen has dove into horror comedies as of lately, uh, I think that would work super solid. Damn yeah, I, I think yeah, I think the. Obviously, vampires are a very terrifying thing, uh, and, and putting that playful spin on them, I think, would be a real fun time. I, I have seen the doc, the mockumentary, uh, original, um, but I haven't seen the the season one, so I can't really critique anything on that in that front. But I do think it would be a pretty fun time, considering you know it did get renewed and it's a fan favorite. Definitely, definitely. All right, gentlemen. So that is, we've all done a round one uh, for, of course, we had Strangers Halloween 2018 and what we do in the shadows. But let us go to round two now uh, for our second round picks of mazes that we want to be see become treatments. Sammy, take it away with round two. Round two, fight. Round two, I'm going to go with something I've been calling for for a year now. Um, it was it was on the speculation list. Uh, I, I want the haunting of Hill House, and I want it now. Um, <laughs> I want it every day of my life. So <laughs> that show was that show was terrifying, um, and it was so intriguing. And I think it lends itself perfectly to be a very fan favorite maze and really pull a lot of people in because of its you know being super talked about on Netflix getting renewed for a, another 
spinoff of it, basically, with uh, Bly Manor. Um, so I think it'll be super sick if they do that. Um, obviously, anything like that home is just super creepy if you've seen it. Um, so I think that lends itself to be pretty cool to be a facade, um, which I think is going to be a very difficult facade to, to accomplish, considering its sheer size. Yeah. But they did they did do well on the Exorcist when they did that. So I do have faith in them being able to pull anything off. Um, so I think obviously you'll go into the home, and it really I don't think it really has to follow the progression of the the movie. I mean, not, not the movie of the the series. Yeah. Um, um, because I think that'd be very difficult considering it's fast forwarding, going back in time. Uh, and as you realize throughout the show, kind of spoilers, that home is kind of frozen in time. Yeah. Um, so I think that'll allow for a lot more freedom when, um, you know, as they get developed the whole script for it or the base treatment. Um, so I think obviously you're going to walk into that home and, um, you know, I, 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 they may have to put it in the soundstage just because of it being, I think, the sheer massiveness of it. Um, but I would love it to be two storied, um, especially like that front room, um, because I think it'll lend itself to seeing a lot of different things. I think you can get introduced rather quickly to all of the characters. Um, and I think that's something that they also could do is maybe have two different walkways on it, um, two different paths that you can take. Um, and I, I don't know if that's something that they have done at HHN because I'm kind of a, a noob in that front, but I know that they have done it at other haunts. Um, I know they did it at HHN Orlando at times. They've done like two different pathways as well as uh, not to do that, obviously, in Paranormal Inc. Um, so I think one pathway, um, I think they can lead you through either side of the, like either left or right or down the hallways. Um, and obviously that's going to lend itself to scares um, depending which side you take. I think one side could be like the um, the ghosts that have been there for a long time. So like you know you have like the clock the clock workers the the 1920s prohibition people and things like that. Whereas the other ones you'll see like the more modern ghosts, bent neck lady, um, and uh, like all these other ones that you know really torment the kids, um, as well as the mother. And I think you'll come back depending which side of the hallway you'll come. You're um, you'll you'll go basically through. Uh, down hallways and into rooms and see like a lot of those different things like you know going down into the basement um where like they, they find out that there was like a prohibition home and they were like smuggling uh, alcohol and things like that um you'll be able to go through just diff- those different like scenes um you'll and obviously you're gonna have to go through the red room eventually i think that's where the money shot's gonna come um where um you get to, to piece those things together um but I think before that, you always you have to go through the uh, the morgue um, and at least get two to three rooms of that because anytime you're going through a morgue, it's creepy. Um, I can only imagine like one of the thoughts that came to my mind was the scene where you have the two people basically dead. You have the mother on one, and then you have the the daughter on the other one, and you have to walk through that kind of like the, the same way they made you do that during uh, Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. Um, and they're both going to come at you at the same time. And that's just going to, you know, make you poop yourself probably. Um, cause I think that's going to be a really, really terrifying scare. Um, you're going to have to go through the red room and have tea with the mother and all the kids. Um, and that, that's going to be weird. Um, you're going to have to, I think in one of the rooms, um, you're going to have to have the late, the bent neck lady hanging. Um, and I think the last thing, uh, you'll, you'll, your final kind of scare will be just like kind of when you're thinking it's gone. Um, I don't, I don't know when Blind Manor is coming out, but kind of maybe pulling the scare from there to to make you want to come back because I feel like it may get the same Stranger Things treatment if yeah. it does well and get renewed for a second time with the new show. Definitely. All right. Logan, what are your thoughts on Haunting of Hill House, man? Yeah, you know what? I, I really see that happening. I know it was on the speculation map, like Sammy said, and I 100% agree that it would be a great, great maze to get t- to, to get tickets sold and people into the park. Um, I, I just rewatched it, as a matter of fact, like three or four weeks ago, and I, and I, I can't help 
but I, I I can't help but to every time I see the bent neck lady, I the, the crap is scared out of me in that show, dude. Like every time I see that bent neck lady, like I I piss myself. She is so creepy. So her in the maze like seals the deal for me. Um, but I agree, it would have to go probably. Uh, I I would like it to go inside of the soundstage where Stranger Things was. Um, and I, I like the idea of what you brought up about having two pathways. Um, I, I remember at Knox or in Paranormal Inc. they had that. Um, and I don't think Hollywood has ever done something like that. And I think it's a cool idea because it gets people coming back and wanting to experience the room that they that they didn't go through. Yeah. Um, and I think Haunting of Hill House would, would make a great, would, would, would make it, would, I think having two pathways would be great in Haunting of Hill House. It would be the perfect place to pull that off. Uh, as far as two story as a two story maze, I know HHN, at least to my knowledge, hasn't done anything like that. I, I think it would be really cool. I'm wondering about like so, like some wheelchair access. So I, I, if they have, um, if, if I, I think what would be cool is um, if they had two pathways, one going upstairs and one not going upstairs, one just you know going straight, or um, just giving the option if you want to go up the stairs or if you or and, and if you're capable of walking upstairs. And whatnot might be really cool. Um, and the red room, uh, uh, like you were just saying, I was hoping you were going to say that that's a money shot because it would have to resolve and have to come down to that red room, and that would probably be the most terrifying part of the maze. We would definitely have to have uh, the the mom and the kid drinking their tea, and probably that kid probably dead on the floor um, after drinking it, and maybe or maybe having a scare actor like acting like he's. Like he's like salivating on the on the poison and like asking you for help or something. Um, I I see that 100% coming to, to to the park. I really do. Um, and I think it's still on the the speculation map, isn't it? It wasn't. It wasn't. No, it hasn't gone taken off yet, so it's okay. still there. Okay. Well, I I personally think if if they're gonna do a Netflix property that isn't Stranger Things, I I would love to see Haunting of Hill House come. Definitely. How do Anthony? What are your thoughts? I uh, I agree, but there was two scenes that you did not talk about that I really would love to see in that maze, and that would be, of course, the bowler hat guy yes. floating around, stalking yes. you, being scary. Yes. That's terrifying. Um, and uh, the scene of them arguing in the car and the infamous jump scare. Um, I, I, I still was, know how they can capitalize on that one. That, that was I, I, I have an idea of how they could do that. They could do like how they did with The Shining in a way where they had the effect of the dead girls and then they showed them dead and then they showed them alive, showed them dead. So the way I was thinking is they can they could probably use that same car from, they, from us, right? And put two, of course, um, people in there or just, you know, uh, dummies in there and then – you know, have it dark, and then one minute have the light shine on the girl screaming, which would be a good jump scare, yeah. like a, a straight way, like a, going down a hallway, and you see them driving, and then all of a sudden it shines, and then the jump scare happens, and then maybe you can actually have like an actual scare actor play that girl and jump out at the same time, where it's like a double scare, you know what I mean? So that could be something that they can work on. So I didn't think about that. That's a good idea. Yeah, that's a great idea. But that would be the only thing I add. Other than that, I, I do like the going multiple ways. That's a that's a that's a that's something new for Horror Nights, mm -hmm. to my knowledge, that has not been done. Um, Knotts has done it many times uh, with multiple ways, and I've seen it done at Haunted Hayride as well, um, and Queen Mary. So um, yeah, there'd be the multiple ways way would be pretty cool. Um, so yeah, Logan, maze number two, my friend. All right, number two. Um, this is one that's, I mean, I, I don't want to say it's far-fetched, but I, I mean, I definitely don't see it coming this year, but I, I hope that they would consider this property. Um, I've, I've got a lot of wants, but I was trying to do something out of the norm that I haven't heard really anybody talk about, and that is uh, a make for the Twilight Zone original black and white show. Um, huh. Kind, kind of feeling a creep show trick-or-treat kind of vibe you know it, it's an anthology so i i'm i'm thinking the facade is going to be a big big black wall kind of like like a big just a straight wall kind of like the the creep show maze uh even though it was a book but just uh, and or the um holidays and, and hell uh facade was just a big wall i'm thinking a big black wall with a bunch of stars twinkling and uh having like the e equals mc squared thing over it and have like a blinking eye and like um the 
<laughs> if, if you watch the intro to the show, the the door opens and it says you've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. You you <laughs> enter the maze through that door. Oh. Yeah, and I'm thinking, I maybe have like a Rod Serling like, an impersonator standing outside of the maze talking to you as you're in line, uh, kind of like when in Ghostbusters last uh, last year they had Rick Moranis. Yeah. A guy dressed as Rick Brandon's character in Ghostbusters, you know, trying to talk to you, and he was really good. So I imagine, like, you know, having some dude in a suit with, like, slicked hair and talking, like, picture this. Uh, uh, you know, like how, like, it's kind of like banter that he says, like, right before each episode. Um, and this interacting with, 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 the, with the line that way to keep people entertained. And then, so anyways, so you're entering, as you're entering that facade, as you're entering through that door, you hear... You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. The dun 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 dun. dun, dun. Nice. Uh, and then I'm thinking, what would get people talking about this maze if they could pull this off? And I feel like it's the only way they could pull this off properly is black and white sets and black and white costumes and like the like some like white face paint. Just trying to implement this like you walked into a black and white movie. Like what comes to mind is like. Um, do you ever see that movie with Tobey Maguire and Reese Witherspoon, Pleasantville, where they like where they go into their favorite 1950s TV show and everything's black and white? Like, I want people to feel like they stepped into the in, into a TV and like they're in this black and white show. Uh, so like some gray face paint, uh, you know, just lots of grays and whites. Anyways, um, so I'm thinking the first room. It was really hard to kind of narrow this down because, of course, Twilight Zone's very, like, mystery. And, like, there are some, like, very, um, there are some very popular episodes that feature uh, certain horror characters, like, uh, like a couple of creatures and aliens and stuff like that. But overall, when you look at the episode list, a lot of it's, like, mystery. So it was yeah. really hard to pinpoint, like, what would, per se, make a great, you know, maze room. So... Uh, I, I'm thinking the first one that immediately came to mind when thinking of a Twilight Zone uh, maze, the first segment I think they should go into would be that one called the Eye of the Beholder, where um, all of the nurses have like have have like the pig nose faces. Yeah. yeah. Uh, where like the woman's got her head like wrapped the entire episode, and she and you don't see the uh, spoilers uh, for a very old show. Um, uh, <laughs> Through the entire show, uh, she this patient's in, in a in a in a hospital room, and she's come. She's she just had surgery, and uh, you think that she's really ugly, and that the surgery like cured her ugliness, and you don't see the faces of the nurses or the doctors in the entire show. Well, the very end reveals that they they pull the the wrapping off, and she's a beautiful woman, and everybody around her has got these like gnarly looking pig noses and. And uh, in, in this Twilight Zone world, the norm is this ugly-looking pig nose, and if you're beautiful, you're the outcast. And they're like, oh, man, the surgery didn't work. You're still ugly. Um, <laughs> and she's trying to get out of the hospital. But, like, it, it's for its time, like, that, like, when, when the camera showed that everybody was really ugly in the room, like, it was pretty gnarly, man. So, honestly, yeah. I think they pulled that off right. It could feel pretty eerie in there. Um, and then um, I'm thinking uh, trans transition into i'm um, sorry i lost my place here um transition into the next segment which would be nightmare at twenty thousand feet which is uh, a fan favorite, fan favorite classic right here and i think that the way that they could pull this off being that the entire that the entire segment takes place in an inside of an airplane uh you're walking down the aisle of an airplane in, in this in this first little room and the ground is kind of like moving back and forth like you know it's kind of unsteady and you're it's kind of hard to walk at times, and it gets, like, worse and worse. Um, and then out, out behind one of the seats pops this guy who's supposed to be the guy in, the, in, the guy in that segment, uh, played by William Shatner, uh, like, trying to convince you, like, there's something on the side of the plane, there's something on the side of the plane, like, trying, he's, that, that's the first scare in that room. He's, he's trying to convince you that there's something on the side of the plane, that we got to land this thing, or no, nobody's believing him, that there's something on the side of the airplane that's trying to, that's trying to get them to crash. And then, uh, and then I'm thinking the uh, the the next room you're walking down a you're you're walking down an aisle of course and the plane is still you know kind of weary and then you see the creature that's on the side of the plane like like rushing at the window and trying to get into the plane uh, and whatnot and then it, then the, the next room is going to kind of progress into one of the 
one of the windows in the plane is shattered. So there's a bunch of wind going around, big wind effect, like the, the airplane window shattered, things are being sucked out kind of thing. And the creature's in, in the plane with you. And he's trying to get you from, he's popping out from behind the seats and trying to quiet you. Uh, so then that's that segment. And then I'm thinking for the third segment, I'll be the Talking Tina segment, just because everybody that thinks, at least everybody I know that thinks of Twilight Zone, they think of Talking Tina. Um, this one is kind of hard with scares. I would definitely need some help on some ideas on, on, on how, because it's a doll that you never see move in the entire segment but i was thinking having like some like light effects like you know like you're walking through the house and you're you're, you're hearing talking tina's voice overhead and speakers giving that really creepy feet creepy feeling anybody who grew up with that show tells you talking tina scared the crap out of them um so hearing that i'm talking tina and i'm kill you and then so like there's like light effects you're walking on a hallway and all of a sudden like the like the light shines on this doll sitting right there and she's laughing um so i don't know that that They're might fine. be cool terrifying effect and i'm thinking for the final room like the money shot room um I'm, I'm putting all my money shots at the end is the final room is you're 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 in the realm of the twilight zone like you're in a room in a giant room full of stars like uh, what comes to mind like you're um uh, like the i'm getting back to disneyland here i don't know why that's popping up but like um the Peter Pan ride when you're in the scene where like there's a bunch of stars all over the wall, all, all over the wall, and stars are hanging down, like just like walking through this like other dimension where there's just stars on the floor, stars on the wall, stars everywhere, and then in 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 this scene, uh, you're gonna hear the Twilight Zone theme song, you're gonna hear Rod, Rod Serling talking, and then every monster or character that was featured in the maze is going to pop, is it's gonna continue popping out at you, and even some that weren't in the that weren't in the in the, in the previous room. Like some Easter eggs, like there's one with like a dummy. I'll look at it, you and laugh. And uh, there's a there's one uh, with aliens where uh, aliens come to the earth and they're they're uh, they're trying to they're acting like they're going to by helping them with technology, and then you realize that they're trying to eat that they're trying to eat man. Like this guy finds a cookbook in the show and it says to serve man, and figures out oh it's a cookbook. Yeah. Um, so some aliens popping out at you. I don't know. I, I think. It, it would be if they could pull this off right. I, I think it would be one that people would be talking about for years. So I don't know. Definitely. Any ideas on that one? I uh, I like the idea too at the end when you said you're going to introduce more characters, like as Easter eggs and stuff, because it kind of gives hope for a sequel to the maze if it does good. Uh, that you can bring in those stories next. Um, I like the entire idea though of it being black and white and gray. Um, just to really put that nostalgia of the old show into the maze. And I think it'd be very revolutionary because I don't think anything like that has really been done. So for them to take the step and actually take the time to really do all that and, and really bring that to life would be really cool. And I think a lot of people would get a very big kick out of it. Um, and I can also see Rod Sterling's character and the outside being kind of like the Twitter password as well. Like you go up to him and give him like a Twilight Zone reference or episode name. And he gives you like, he gives you something, you know, like something that's from the Twilight Zone. You know what I mean? So it'd be like a really cool collectible to have. Uh, what do you think, Sam? Well, I, I agree that it, it, I think this would be a really fun maze. Um, I love the facade idea of using like kind of the creep show meets um, Holidays in Hell. That obviously lends the opportunity to like, I feel like it would be cool if maybe like if it was like a TV. Yeah. Cool. Uh, it would be cool as a TV, or like or I the, the door too is really cool. Uh, but I feel like if you if you if you put the outside as a TV, it's a facade. Yeah, really? When you walk down the hallway, it's just the door to have, the... It, have it be like an old TV with like antennas. No, yeah. That'd be yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, and kind of in the line queue if they wanted to, like yeah. the way that they do with. Uh, Crypt TV, maybe playing like old, yeah, that's a great um, idea. old old videos of you know the the past ones, um, and would 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 also be a cool idea. Maybe if they did the same thing with Creep Show, if they wanted to expand the maze a little bit further, is maybe pull two of the modern episodes in. Yeah. So not only do you walk through like the three black and whites, but you also walk through like two colored ones as well. But if it was all in black and white, I think that'd be really fun, yeah, I, and it I, would really get a lot of buzz. I think they did. I didn't really watch the the new show, but I heard that they that they did like a thing where they put them all in black and white is that true i think you watched that show where it, it came out in color 
But then I think it was when it was put on a DVD or, or Blu-ray, they had an option if you wanted to watch them in black and white. So That's you could, cool. I didn't hear about that, but I... Yeah. I gotta watch. I gotta finish the new one. I've been also watching the new Creep Show, which is actually really good. Oh, it's so. great, man! I could go on and on about that, but uh, yeah, that new Creep Show show is great. I think they're slotted for season two. Hopefully, COVID doesn't uh, push that back. Yeah, they just premiered it on AMC too recently. So so good. I think the Blu-ray is coming out for that first season. I'm totally gonna snag that this one. It's a good one right there, man. Um, all right, let's let's bring it home, man. This one's near and dear to my heart, and I know this one personally would scare the shit out of me because it has in the past. Resident Evil, but the video game universe. Yeah. So I, I, I mainly I nailed this story more around Resident Evil 3 because I just got done recently playing that game. However, there is Easter eggs to other Resident Evil characters in this uh, maze, which I'll get to in a bit. But... The overall story and theme. So you join, you're joined alongside Jill Valentine and Carlos uh, Olivier, um, All of, I don't know how to fuck, fuck his last name. He's just Carlos. <laughs> you should just know that, all right? Okay. You're joined along Jill and Carlos um, as you uh, race through Raccoon City, try to find a cure for the recent outbreak of zombies and deformed creatures. But it won't be easy. As you make your way through Raccoon City, you will face some big challenges and foes along the way. Some of Resident Evil's biggest villains. Will you survive your way through Raccoon City to the Umbrella Corporation? That'd be kind of my promo to it right there. So my first room, or no, my, okay, my facade would be, of course, Raccoon City Police Department. A little messed up and run down from the riots uh, 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 and the apocalypse, of course. So you're going to see this building. It's kind of like messed up and... You know, there's bodies on the floor on the front, but it says Raccoon City Police Department. Uh, the first room, obviously, you're going to walk into Raccoon City Police Department's lobby. Bodies on the floor and zombies jumping out uh, from behind the front desk, you know, everywhere. Uh, where on the other side, you're going to see Carlos jump out and shoot the zombie, which he's going to kind of tell you to continue to uh, run through the police department and try to find an escape. Transition rooms, of course, uh, as you transition into different scenes, uh, make it as if you're going out of buildings, alleyways, subways, or Umbrella Corporation rooms, just to kind of give it that uh, feel like if you're leaving a, an area, then you're transitioning into the next one. So say you're leaving the uh, police department, it will transition to you walking out of a door into an alleyway into the next scene, which will bring you outside or something. So really kind of would want to do really the transition rooms right the money shot room would be the first time you encounter Nemesis. This will be the one that everyone keeps talking about because Nemesis is a giant character. Um, we're going to see him jump out of you from various spots because if you guys don't know in that game, for some reason this guy is everywhere. I don't know how he gets everywhere, but he's <laughs> everywhere. Uh, and he jumps out everywhere and likes to freaking hit me out of nowhere. So uh, until you become face-to-face -face with him as he tries to grab you and kill you, at that point Jill is going to jump out and shoot him and tell you to make your way towards Umbrella Corporation. The final room, which of course another room where everyone will be talking about, is as you're making your way through Umbrella Corporation, you know, you're going to see a lot of uh, the uh, most iconic characters of the game's franchise. You're going to walk down a hallway with uh, these cells in it on each side, where you're going to see villains like uh, Yon, who is a giant snake in the game, uh, El Gigante, which of course was just a giant character in the game, uh, the T1, uh, the T103 Tyrant, which was the main villain for Resident Evil 2, uh, Vertigo, and of course the Baker family, most recently from Resident Evil 7, which were terrifying people. Um, ended it all with, of course, the final confrontation of Nemesis and Jill in his final big form. So that would be the giant room that you see at the very end of giant Nemesis, and you're going to have Jill on a gun that you use in Resident Evil 3. Uh, finally killing Nemesis, but I think what I'll do is make it like uh, for your final final scare as after you see like a dead Nemesis like Nemesis is just gonna jump out of you where you're gonna see on the same side on the other side You'll have Jill and Carlos jumping out shooting Nemesis to kind of end it once and for all um, So some scare and characters obviously you're gonna have Jill people playing Jill people playing Carlos Um You'll have your zombies. I was thinking of adding some spiders in there because in Resident Evil 3, there's a spider scene that scared the fuck out of me. And I know in that maze, it will scare the hell out of me as well. Um, maybe some spitter zombies as well. Uh, Nemesis, of course, the Baker family. Yon the Giant Snake, I think, would be a really cool addition. Um, El Gigante. Uh, the T-103 Tyrant, um, basically as big as Nemesis. And, of course, Vertigo. 
And I'm thinking for my Twitter password and handler, you'll have an umbrella corporation doctor standing out in front, trying to calm everyone down and trying to sell them lies about umbrella corporation. Passwords can be, of course, references and Easter eggs from the game. I think I would make, of course, the first password nemesis. And that is basically my maze treatment for my resume maze. That's pretty solid, dude. I, uh, I, I, I haven't really played too much. I, I, the only Resident Evil game I played from start to finish was the fourth one. Uh, that's one I, I kind of grew up with, you know, having like Leon Kennedy uh, in there. Uh, but I know there's a ton of fans for three, especially, especially for two, uh, from what I've seen. Uh, but no, I, I, I know the characters that you're talking about. I never really played three too much, um, but I know the characters you're talking about. And I know as a video, fan, as a video game fan myself, and uh, and I have a lot of friends who are super into that series. Like, it would please a shit ton of people. Like, it, it, it would really freaking open up a lot of doors to introduce video game pieces. Like, I, I know Warner Brothers, uh, I, I didn't get to go to that. And I, they didn't have it last year. But they, they had the Arkham uh, they had the Arkham maze there. And I'm really bummed out that I missed that because I love crafting games. So I think having a Resident Evil game maze could open up many other yeah, no, I think it does open a good door to, to a lot more video games. Um, I think there's an opportunity just for a lot of those like innocent characters as you're going through rooms with it, whether it be Umbrella Corp, like scientists, um, d- uh, you know, deformed Raccoon City police, um, and things like that. Um, as well as you know, obviously any of the zombies you encounter or any of those you know creatures. So there's like opportunities for like those scares blended throughout some of those big scenes, which I think would be a, a lot of fun, especially because I think some of the best scares are those ones where you're not expecting it. You're kind of going through black walls. You're kind of going through a scene where you don't think anything's going to happen. Kind of a tra- or you feel like it's a transition from like one big scene to the next. Yeah. So I feel like those those can be a, those can be like sprinkled in throughout. Um, and I think it'd be really cool, obviously, when you're going through those that where you have all the cells with all of the other creatures and stuff. That'd be pretty fun. Definitely. Yeah. Yep, that is it, man. Raccoon City, Resident Evil Game Universe. I want to see it at HHN to be fun. That is going to do it for the pilot episode of Maze Treatments, man. That was fun. I really enjoyed writing out a treatment, uh, getting some dream properties that we would all love to see at the uh, event. Uh, we're going to try to get guests on the show next time, but if not, we'll do another couple of Maze Treatments between all of us. But the goal is to be getting guests on and trying to see ultimately what we can come down with as far as a versus kind of thing which would be really fun two people pitch us maze ideas and we ultimately decide which is the better one but nonetheless had a fun time today so today uh just want to thank everyone for watching thank everyone for a thousand subscribers well hold on hold up I, I think we should pick who won this you want to see who won all right as a, okay and i knew you would say that because that's what i was writing down right here as far as i, I mean i know who i think won who I won actually, round? Okay, round one. Strangers Halloween 2018 and what we do in the shadows. Oh, that's Logan. all the way. Hollow, Halloween all the way. Logan, I have to go Halloween. Logan, yeah. wow. That was developed. Well. I have to do go Halloween. As much as I would love to see what we do in the shadows, Halloween 2018, he sold me on that one. Oh, well, honestly, like that's not even like my top maze that I want, but it just works so well, doesn't it? Like It, it, it just works. So well, and it's a newer film. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I I could really see that one doing really well. But yeah, I, I think guys. the way you, and I think the way you designed it and made it flow was really good. Because I would have thought of putting a lot of like the end of the movie, whereas you put like let's put a, let's put like let's go to the asylum. I think it'd be right, terrifying right. walking through, and you right. just like have all the the prisons on the cells, and you have to walk I, through. I, them. I think it's a brilliant idea, and I can't. I would love to see that design. Who takes round two? Haunting a Hill House, Twilight Zone, OG, or Resident Evil? I'm gonna go Haunting. A, I'm gonna go with uh, the Twilight Zone because the black and white concept is not something I would have thought. Yeah, of. you can't have mine back to back like that, bro. <laughs> yeah, go no, back to back with Twilight Zone. Yeah. Well, I think I think the overall winner was your Halloween maze. Uh, well, I, I think bracket two. I might have to do well just because I I I feel bad, Anthony, because I I really haven't seen. Or, or plays even uh, like Resident Evil, and I haven't really yeah. seen that show, so it's hard for me to be crazy excited because I haven't experienced that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Myself. 
I, I would honestly probably go with Haunting of Hill House for my number two pick. And and I, I gave that show like an eight out of 10 uh, because I, I, I felt myself uh, when I was watching that show, I was confused a lot of the time. And I had to kind of go back and rewatch stuff to understand it. But as a maze, I, I think it would be like a 10 out of 10 maze if, if they did it right, especially with the way that he described it, having a two path thing i think it would be and having it go upstairs i think it would be very revolutionary for, i'm for actually all really on a, a three-way tie with all three of them because i do like my resident evil concepts but i really do like that twilight zone og concept i really do like that haunting the hell hell concept but i'm probably gonna have to go twilight zone oh really wow so that's yeah. a back-to-back -back win for logan man because i i think much like sammy that that black and white pretty much just sold me. It but would be, it would be different. Yeah, and I think that would be really cool. Sammy kind of interviewed. I was gonna let the fans decide what they thought were the winners, but he thought we all three of us should like think. Well, so I still want to hear what the fans want to. You know, yeah, the fans yeah. want to see you. What What do you Same. guys think? Out of the two rounds, who what maze would you guys want to see the most out of the both of them? You know, you guys could pick uh, one from each, or if you want to see all of them. But give us a, a, a leave a, leave a comment down below for round one, which maze you would love to see the most, and for round two, which you would love to see the most. And uh, of course, we'll respond to the comments. We'll look up and see what's going on. Uh, again, thank you for 1,000 subscribers. That's insane. Um, and we're going places, man. Uh, should be fun. So. Thank you guys for tuning into the pilot episode of Mainstreamants, and we will see you guys soon. Peace.